All right, we're gonna to attempt to do a little multi-part video here, some things I've learned and some little cheats around some stuff. Um, first of all, I just wanna show you, this is kind of impressive, I'm getting better at this. Um, so hardening hardening these gears really, and shimming them really helps out quite a bit. And I wanted to show you the one that just came out of my front diff after a, a slight nose bomb on a, on a 15 foot jump with a 15 foot gap. <laughs> And I passed the uh, passed the, the landing ramp a bit, and just just nose bumped a little bit, and it was it was dark. I couldn't see it. Look at this pinion gear just absolutely exploded. I, di I didn't drive it at all right after it happened, because I, I usually can save a ring gear. Believe it or not, look at this thing. It's just destroyed. But now look at the uh, look at the grain of it. Sorry, the focus. The grain doesn't look as terracotta -y <laughs> as pottery like as the uh, the stock ones do and this is the first time I've seen a nice good meld I don't think you probably see it in the video but it actually looks like a nice good uh, a nice good forge in there um, I wasn't actually getting good results quenching in oil although this one may be quenched in shock fluid too once or twice uh, quenching in water seems to to do the best job now you can tell by taking a file to it after you're done it should just skip right over it uh, I'm using this style of uh, torch with the yellow nap cast works really well um, heat that thing up glowing orange if you're gonna do uh, ring gears get some old ring gears that are burnt and stack them on top of each other so you don't warp your gear um, do not touch <laughs> I just spent a bunch of time fixing one do not touch the pliers uh, like on a clamping fashion on the uh, on the back of the ring gear because it will uh, distort you can actually put a bearing uh, busted bearing uh, side on it that that might hold, that would hold it in place, but just I just don't touch it with the thing. I put it vice clamps or something like that wide open. Um, so that is pretty gnarly. This is the uh, this is the new ones going in. So I basically oh oh yeah I wanted to show you the the uh, ring gear which is absolutely untouched. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's not a mark on it, and it's going back in. I mean, not a chip gear on it after all that destruction. <laughs> It's hard to believe. You know, I have to fish those chips out of my my hull. Um, so sh I shim on the side, but I, I don't think it's as effective as as the pinion shim. Uh, although I do shim on the side. Uh, now notice on this one, I've got two different size bearings here. The um, the five inch bearing provides a lot better seat, and it gives you that extra push too. Uh, I've got the the crap bearing on the other side of the four four bearing. Uh, I forget, the front or the back requires the five, uh, and the other one requires the four, but when you buy the bearing set, it just comes with the five, and, and, and it's a lot better. The bearing's a bigger bearing, and, and it seems to hold up better. Um, 100 fluid, uh, you know, nothing nothing real fancy there. I don't lock this thing down extremely tight. I do not put Loctite on the end of the nuts of these, these guys. <laughs> put it on the middle. And uh, I get really good results. I notice when it's locked tight on their 10-inch uh, screw, stock screw, I get a pull slip on this thing. I actually pull, you know, a, a decent amount of pull out of it. Um, so I usually file down like a millimeter off that 10, which actually puts it in a nice, nice snug fit and doesn't pop and doesn't do any of that stuff at all. So no, no, no give, no play, no, no Joe. Um, my pinion shim is actually fairly crafty and it's pretty cool looking it works great um, nitro revo head gasket come in three different sizes uh, by millimeter one's a th point three, one's a two and a one I think actually real inexpensive way to shim and look how pretty they come out after this one you know has been in, been in. comes out all nice and formed I'm using a little plastic one right now because I didn't have a, a, a second one in. I run two in the back, and I had been running one in this plastic one in front. Um, I don't think anything would have would have stopped that. I mean, it was it's a pretty big nose bomb off, <laughs> off a pump track park that's pretty extreme. Um, so let's see here. The second, the last item I had here was the old shock cap or the old uh, low C cap for the shock fluid. This comes in handy. Um, constantly ripping silicone shock heads inside these things no matter how you tighten them down sometimes you're ripping the edge and the uh, the other part that they give you in the shock replacement um, has a little rubber seal around uh, one of the parts that you can actually strip off and put your cap you put your shock in your cap uh, silicone cap in your 
shock cap and then put that ring around there and that pr provides a pretty good seal when your rings ripped on the shock on the silicone part uh, but a lot of times they just explode um, and they're just unsalvageable and there's really not a whole lot you can do um, so I, I just was messing around one day and I was looking at this a lot of times when you open up your shock you'll see that your, your silicone thing is just face down in the shock uh, which is kind of normal um, so I kind of just looked at that thing and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> face down in the shock, huh? <laughs> Put it down there. It's a perfect size. It fits perfect. Just pop it in there just like that. Screw it on. I'm running one right now and I've run it through three or three park sessions. I usually rebuild my shocks every four or five times. Um, and it's, I, 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 I can't tell the difference right now if I, if I push up on the suspension. It's absolutely amazing. I got sick of buying those damn things at six bucks, seven bucks a pack, and you only get two silicone caps. It's not really a solution. So this is actually a pretty solid solution, believe it or not. Give it a shot. <laughs> um, this is the new pinion. Oh, um, one other thing too. Um, so no matter how much you think you're greasing the the case, uh, it's just never enough grease. The grease breaks down constantly. Uh, so I'm I'm almost completely loading. <laughs> I've got this one nice little marine grease that's a good protectant one that I keep on the pin pin in the ring, and then I'm almost just loading the full back of the case with with uh, marine grease just to keep it solid in there. And it uh, believe it or not, it helps out on the on the play. You know, all it's got a little piece of plastic to hold the thing in from popping out of the back of the thing. Um, don't get any <laughs> if you if you're thinking about the back. I don't know about the front, but on the back, uh, don't get any goo or juice past that first bearing right there. Don't get it into your main main drive. You'll end up gumming up that thing and then stripping it. Um, and I I, uh, I didn't have real good result. I mean, I'm on, <laughs> I'm no pro. I'm on my uh, 11th ring gear, I think, right now. I'm on the thing for like five, six months. <laughs> um, uh, like a ninth pinion or something like that, maybe 10th maybe now. Uh, but n never before, you know, was I ever exploding a pinion gear like this. And having the ring gear not just absolutely destroyed. Look at that nice shiny in there. Not terracotta anymore. Yeah, that's really it's uh, the the hardening is absolutely really helping out. Um, I was I was just frustrated. I could blow a blow a diff in fifteen minutes. You know, with everything perfectly locked down. Good build. Um, the bolts inside the case are kind of a, a an issue too. I found that um, by putting a small little washer head on. On these guys here and make sure in all all you know all of the ones that are important the big the big torque guys especially back actually that's more important uh, that's where you see them in back um, and just squishing that plastic down and make just making sure everything uh, in that whole region is tight um, and you're still gonna blow them <laughs> but it just depends how you know what you're doing um, if if actually if you're not hardening I found another little trick too that, that gives you an extra run out of your um, out of your blown gear. So after you after you chew one up, you stop and you you take it apart, and you get a little bit of uh, plumbers or it's like electrical putty. Yeah, there, there's some ring gears right here. <laughs> you take a little bit of this putty, just a teeny little bit, take a little ball, and just push it right into that uh, part in the ring gear that's chipped. I mean, if you got a destroyed pinion completely you know you're not gonna get anywhere but um if it's just a chip in the in the ring gear you can like push that little thing in there and over you know if you're just doing speed runs on the grass literally it's like it almost never even happens sometimes if you pop up a curb or you know give it way too much power at the beginning it'll start to click and then you know it'll, it'll eventually start to go but uh, inside the park I, I get 30 minutes i was getting 30 minutes on the unhardened gear uh, for some reason, once you harden it, it doesn't doesn't do shit. But it good. it's when it when it starts to chip, it just it just goes downhill <laughs> uh, quick. The pinion just basically explodes and teeth fly everywhere. So I'm actually pretty pretty stoked with that. That was pretty impressive. That um, that front one existed for well before the time before it existed for five weeks, which was pretty impressive. I was blowing backs, but the, this is the second front in two weeks something like that but i've been pu pushing the park pretty hard um so anyway this uh this gasket just comes out obviously i think i've got the big one hold on a second i think i got a big one here i had it pulled out already little bitch
anyway, um, you, you guys know what to do. Pop that little gasket off. Uh, like I said, I'm running two. Um, and look how nice that fits on here. I'm, I'm not going to run that the plastic one anymore. I'm going to put the the second one on once you uh, how perfect that is. <laughs> once you put put it on, it's flat like that, and you run it for five minutes or whatever. It makes this nice little cone shape. The uh, copper doesn't appear to degrade, and it's soft enough to take a little bit of give. But uh, one with this, this is probably doing me more harm than good. Actually, this this uh, PTFE or whatever this rubber is too too bouncy. Um, not giving me the, a good solid shim. If maybe if I would have had maybe a, you know, and this could be the uh, I don't know, this could be the one or two mil uh, instead of the three mil one. Um, and that would be a problem too. You pretty much push the limit of about four mil of shim um, on either, you know, on the on the pinion itself. Um, I'm pretty much running, I think, about three or four, uh, and almost even think I could maybe run a little bit more in in, in the front, maybe because the pinion's a bigger gear or a bigger dude for some reason. A little bit more slop in the front, I think. But uh, if you don't nose bone all the time, and that wasn't a nose bone either, it was a good solid jump, just a little, little smack hard on the front, knock the, knock the front flashlights off. Um, but uh, I've been getting really good results with this actually. Um, absolutely struggling before, <laughs> so I had to come up with something. Uh, and thanks to the uh, the guy on the, on the net who came up with the uh, the quenching in a oil, uh, I hadn't gotten there yet in my in my thought process. <laughs> I don't know why, why I didn't think of that. But uh, do get better results with quenching in water, believe it or not. The file test comes out good. So I hope this, uh, you know, squares you guys up. This is my first video. Uh, pretty good success. So, Rocket, if you ever come to Santa Cruz, you uh, you can hit up all the, the Pump Track Dog Park. That's where, uh, that's where, I, that's where I reside.